Today on BRS TV Investigates, what rock curing method is best? Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of BRS TV Investigates, a weekly YouTube series which explores popular reefing theories, products, methods, what the manuals are missing with a focus on putting them to the test. Today we're going to test, do acid and bleach curing methods work better than natural rock cures? There's a lot of talk about how long you need to cure dry rock for. More or less, there's a lot of dead organics on the rock and they should be soaked in heated salt water to let them break down before adding it to an existing system. The community generally recommends around a month or two of curing with better results the longer you go. That also seems to match the reef tank based results we've had here as well. That said, there isn't a tremendous amount of data out there telling you exactly how long it takes for organics to completely break down or how well it works. In relation to that, there's also reefers out there that are attempting to accelerate the process with acid or bleach to more rapidly break down the organics and cure it faster. I think we'd all like to know if that actually has value. So the experiment is fairly simple. We did our best to find 60 pounds of similar looking Pukani rock and split it up amongst four tanks, 15 pounds each, filled it with water, a power head for flow, a heater, and started measuring nitrate and phosphate, knowing the phosphate and nitrate levels should rise in unison as the organics break down. We decided to test it weekly until it was apparent the levels were no longer rising in any of the tanks. For those of you that have been following along with other BRS TV Investigates episodes, you already know that finding a solid solution for testing low levels of nitrate was initially a challenge, and that was certainly the case here. A couple of months into our testing, we found a solid, reliable solution, but this test was already going. Simply put, the nitrate levels in this test with the previous method have almost no value, and we're just going to skip reporting them in favor of focusing on phosphate levels, which is going to provide a similar window into the organic breakdown. Starting with phosphate levels in a natural cure, anyone who's cured natural dry rock knows full well it's a stinky, dirty process. There's no way around it. When organics break down, they stink. That's certainly the case here. Water's yellow, cloudy, and stinky. There's no question we're going to measure some phosphate in this case. After one week, the tank with the naturally curing rock was measuring at 0.76 parts per million phosphate. Week 2, 1.12 parts per million. Week 3, 1.11. Week 4, 1.03. Week 5, 1.76, which is a huge jump I don't have an explanation for, but we retested several times with multiple meters. Even hotter, it dropped back down to 0.91 in week 6. And week 7, 0.86. Overall, it certainly appears that the lion's share of the organics broke down in the first two to three weeks, and not a whole lot after that. This matches a decent portion of what the reefing community seems to be reporting, with the exception of the odd jump in week five, which I have no real explanation for. And it's also hard to explain why the phosphate levels would have dropped in week six and seven, potentially caught up in the biomass of the bacteria. I think we're going to set up another experiment, which might get a better window into what's going on here. I'll share some ideas on that after the other results. Next up, we look at the acid cure. While a lot of people think of acid eating or breaking down the organics, the acid's primary function is really dissolving the first layer of rock what the organics are stuck to, which loosens them up and makes them easier to remove. I have to say acid curing is certainly a dangerous process and not one I recommend to anyone. Let me repeat myself here. I do not think any of the benefits associated with this are worth the risk to your health or home. Acid is dangerous, can burn or blind you, as well as damage anything in your house it touches, and even your driveway. That said, it's certainly something that some of the trailblazers are doing, and hopefully they know all the proper safety procedures in dealing with acid like this. It can certainly be done safely if you treat the process with respect. First thing we identified is there's no clear advice on how strong to make the acid dilution or how long to soak it. A 10 to 1 mix of 10 parts water to 1 parts acid is commonly thrown around and anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour of soaking. We attempted a 10 to 1 mix and 20 gallons of water for 15 minutes and it certainly worked because the net result is the rock weighed 25% less when we were done. I don't think most reefers would find dissolving a quarter of the rock acceptable, so we did a 20 to 1 mix with the 20 gallons of water in the container. Net result is we lost 12% of the rock weight. The lesson here is a ratio of water to acid is certainly related to safety, but the real equation here is how much acid you need in comparison to how much rock you're using. I don't think anyone currently knows the answer to that question. I'm sure the community will hone in on a recommendation, but I think there's just simply better ways to get the organics off your rock that don't endanger your health in the same ways. So if you do attempt this, please read up on proper procedure for dealing with acid safely. Wear some safety gear like thick acid resistant gloves, proper safety goggles and a respirator. And do this outside in a well ventilated area with plenty of acid neutralizer around if something were to go wrong. 
there's a strong, almost certain likelihood this is going to create a lot of foam, which can ruin your driveway and obviously kill your lawn. If you're not willing to research proper acid safety techniques on your own, just move on to safer and easier methods. So even though I'm directly telling you not to do this, there were some beneficial results and a reason why some reefers ignore all the warnings and willing to go through all the trouble. Starting with week one and a phosphate level of 0.44, which is approaching half of the week one levels of the natural cure. There was also a lower degree of stink and the water was clear. Not stink free or crystal clear, but there was a noticeable difference. Week two, the levels rose to 0.51, week three, 0.66, week four, 0.61, week five, 0.58, week six, 0.61, and week seven, 0.56. Overall, the 15 minute bath in the 20 to 1 dilution of 20 gallons RODI and 1 gallon of muriatic acid removed 12% of the rock surface, reduced the initial organics and 3 week organics or phosphate levels just shy of half. That said, it still took about 3 weeks to stabilize with the residual organics that were still left on the rock, so I don't know if you significantly reduced the overall cure time by much. An acid cure is likely to have some benefits related to overall nutrient reduction, but I don't think it's going to reduce the total cure time in a way many reefers would like. Moving on to the bleach cure, this is very different from the acid cure, which is dissolving the rock. Bleach is oxidizing and rapidly breaking down the actual organics on the rock surface. Oxidizing or breaking down the organics just seems to be a better approach to reducing the total organic content on the rock. Bleach is also something that many people already understand the basic safety standards for. Now we're using it outside of its intended use, so I would certainly research additional precautions with people who have done this before. Wear gloves, eye protection, and a ventilator. I'd also only do this outside. In certain instances, bleach can form some pretty dangerous gases you do not want in your home. So under no circumstances, do this in your home or even garage, only outdoors. There's not a single instance where curing your rock faster is worth risking your own or your family's health. Similar to acid cures, the reefing community hasn't developed clear science or even safety-based advice on what the ratio of water to bleach should be. 10 to 1 water to bleach is commonly referenced, and because of that, that's what we did. Net result is 20 gallons of water to 2 gallons of common household bleach. Obviously, you want unscented bleach without additives. Again, I wouldn't consider this the correct ratio because no one's clearly identified that. This is more about the amount of bleach or oxidants to the volume of organics and rock weight than it is about the perfect bleach to water ratio. Then weight that against a safe ratio to work with. Other than keeping bleach off your skin and your eyes, the most significant danger here is the gas. So doing this outside with a proper respirator greatly reduces the safety risk. But you should absolutely research this on your own before attempting any of this. That said, with our 20 gallons of water, 2 gallons of bleach, and 15 pounds of rock, we soaked it for a week prior to the test to let the organics break down as much as possible. After that, we changed out with fresh water, added a dechlorinator for a day, tested with a chlorine test strip to make sure the chlorine was removed, and then performed another rinse, then moved the rock to the test tank. After a single week, you could visually see and smell the difference. The water was clear with no detectable odor. It's very clear that many of the organics had been broken down and removed. Net result is week one phosphate levels of 0.45. Week two is 0.34, week three 0.45, week four 0.46, week five 0.43, week six 0.44, and week seven 0.41. Basically no difference in phosphate between week one and week seven, which suggests to me the bleach was rather effective at breaking down and oxidizing the organics and reducing the cure time. Combined with the lack of smell, visually clear water, and the fact that the rock itself is visually cleaner, I think the bleach produced solid results. Because there are still some legit safety concerns, I'm going to stop short of actually recommending this to reefers. Most reefers are still better off just doing a natural cure in heated salt water, which has pretty limited safety concerns. However, if you're willing to do the safety research, wear the proper safety gear, and follow your research safety procedures, I think there's some legit value here. I can say from this point on, I'm personally going to bleach my rock, not just for the reasons outlined today, but also because I'm using dead rock for a reason. I want it to be dead and free of any unwanted organisms. Using bleach almost ensures that any undesirable dormant creatures or algae spores are also completely removed. This is a supportive reason that provides a lot of value to me. 
I'm not in a hurry to get my reef tank started up, so rather than using it to speed up the cure, I think I might soak the rock in the bleach solution for a full three to four weeks and try to get as close as possible to zero organics and related nutrients when we start the tank. It's likely getting a true absolute zero organic or nutrient content with a natural rock source, dead or live, is going to be a difficult endeavor, but most reefers do want to try and start as close as possible. So that said, we went one obvious step further with an acid cure followed with a bleach or oxidant cure. This was a 15 minute acid cure followed by a good rinse and a week long bleach cure. As you might expect, there were legit results there as well. Week one phosphate levels was just 0.27. Week two, 0 0.34. Week three, 0 0.35. Week four, 0 0.33. Week five, 0 0.31. Week six, 0 0.29. And week seven, 0 0.30. Again, almost no change from week one to week seven in the lowest levels for all the different tests. There's certainly some value from the approach of removing some of the rock by dissolving it with acid, loosening the organics and oxidizing the rest. The water and rock were also very clean looking and obviously free of all the yellowing compounds and smells from the decaying organics from the natural cure. I still don't think it's wise for untrained people to mess around with acids in their home, so not only would I not recommend it, I'm going to recommend it against this, but everyone will obviously make their own decisions based on today's results and their willingness to research the correct way to do it. So to answer today's question, do acid and bleach curing methods work better than natural cures? I'm going to go ahead and say this is pretty much a 10 and a reef certainty. There's some pretty clear advantages. That said, I don't think this is really the end of the story. I think there's some additional elements I personally want to know, starting with are there significant differences in organic content between the various rocks, Pukani, Fiji, Reef Saver, and even live rock, which is the historical standard. I have a feeling that we might be surprised by how many nutrients live rock releases over time. And to be frank, it's hard to imagine how Reef Saver won't perform really well as it relates to easy curing and limited nutrients. I'd also really like to know how nitrate correlates with the phosphate levels, which is a strong indication if the phosphate levels are exclusively related to organics or potentially related to another mechanism. I don't have the exact details complete yet, but I think I'd like to repeat this test with all those rock types with our current nitrate testing solution and potentially with 100% weekly water changes designed to get to the bottom of when each rock type has been properly cured and totally free of organics. Proper rock curing technique is a pretty hotly debated topic on the forum, so I don't think the conversation on this one will disappoint. It's super helpful to the entire reefing community when you share your personal experiences. If you're interested in learning more, particularly other reefers' methods, check out this week's Reef to Reef thread. If you like what we're doing here, let us know with a quick thumbs up and subscribe because we release new BRS TV videos every week. See you next Friday with another BRS TV Investigates.